It started out as a normal day, but as is often the case in the occupied West Bank, it turned into a bloody one. We were happy. It was a good day. Then our car broke down. We got out to see what was wrong. The soldiers thought we were going to throw stones. They started shooting at us. Ayyem took three bullets, in his right arm, the abdomen and his left foot. But that was only his latest brush with the Israeli army. Just a few months ago, Ayman and his brother Wadia were detained during a night raid. Their experience, similar to this one. In a video released by Bet Salem, an Israeli human rights group, a father tells his son to wake up. Don't be scared. The army is here, he says. Ayhem and Radia were taken away in front of their helpless parents. It was petrifying. We were both in a one square meter cell. We couldn't lay down to go to sleep. We were tied up in a chair. We asked for water. They said no water and no toilet unless we admitted our crime. I kept on telling them we didn't do anything. There are currently more than 180 miners held in Israeli jails, many for as little as throwing stones at soldiers, or like this 13-year-old child who was arrested for picking wild herbs near a settlement. Many of the detainees are taken to prisons inside Israel. Parents need to apply for a visitation permit through the Red Cross, and that could take up to three months. In the meantime, the minor is cut off from the world. On average, 800 Palestinian minors are held in military detention each year. Israel says it's on security grounds. The age of criminal responsibility in the occupied territory is 12. That doesn't apply to settlers who carry out attacks on Palestinians. Palestinian children are potential terrorists. So this is the mentality by which the Israeli officials are treating uh, Palestinian children. So first of all, uh, they convince themselves that they are treating uh, or dealing with potential uh, terrorists and uh, behaving accordingly. 15-year-old Ahmed Al-Atras still shivers when he remembers his ordeal. He was on his way to have a haircut in Hebron when Israeli soldiers pounced on him just a few weeks ago. At first they didn't do anything, but then they taunted us, tied my hands, blindfolded me, made me sit on a chair. Each time I tried to sleep, they would pour water on me. I was always thinking about my parents, what will happen to them if they were to keep me here? And I was really worried for my mum and dad. Ahmed was released after two weeks. But like many children who face military courts and prisons, it's an experience that will have an impact on him for the rest of his life. Khudab Al Hamid, Al Jazeera, in the occupied West Bank.